Once in a couple of years, Shonen Jump creates a manga series that takes the world like a storm. We have had the likes of the big three being One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach, and then of course we had the manga such as Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer who got popular due to their anime adaptations being phenomenal. But none of them can compare to the success of Chainsaw Man. At the time of this release of this video, there is no current anime adaptation for Chainsaw Man as a series. But of course there is one in the works by Studio Mappa, the same studio behind Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan. But even without an anime adaptation, the manga still has a dedicated fan base that sings its praises every day. In the past week, I read Chainsaw Man and boy was it a ride. Uh, how's it going guys, Foul Plays here, and today I am going to be doing a major review of the whole entire series of Chainsaw Man. But if you like what you see, let me know down in the comment section below if you want me to continue my reviewing for the Chainsaw Man series going into part two for Chainsaw Man. But like I said, Chainsaw Man is a ride for sure. I haven't really been this shocked for a series in a long time. And I can't really say that about other Shonen Jump series such as Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, and Black Clover. Not only is the series great, but the artwork, the world building, and the characters are all stunning and breathtaking and make it stand out as a modern classic in the making. Now, I'm not saying that all the other series in Jump are terrible, but compared to Chainsaw Man, they are leagues behind. But before we get into the rest of the review, make sure to go ahead and smash that like button down below and click subscribe with notifications on. And also while you're there, go and follow me down on Twitter as well to keep up with any manga or anime that I may be reading or watching at the current moment. And also let me know down in the comments below if you want me to start reviewing any manga. I'm actually new to the review scene and I wanna try to get my, uh, my takes out there. But without further ado, Let's start off with the premise. The story starts off with our main character being Denji, and he's forced to end up taking on his dad's debt and trying to get his way out of poverty. And basically to do that, he makes a contract with a devil named Pochita. Now the whole reason why this contract was made was because Pochita had suffered some sort of blood loss. And Denji used this moment so that he could create a contract between Pochita and him to where if Pochita used his blood, he would end up working alongside Denji to hopefully get out of debt. So this goes on for a couple of years and Denji ends up basically taking out a bunch of devils that the Yakuza want him to take out and he basically gets his reward money and he's very, very close to getting his debt taken out. But of course, once he gets really, really close, the Yakuza, as the Yakuza is known for, will definitely end up taking out Denji. And basically they go ahead and they start taking Denji out. Now, one thing to mention is that Denji has never had any relationship with a woman or any relationship with the outside world. And one of Denji's goals in life is to end up marrying a woman or getting even into a relationship with a woman. Now this is when Pochita comes in and says that he wants to create a contract with Denji. Now in this contract, Pochita says that he will end up giving Denji his heart. And in return, Denji will have to make his dreams come true. And he wants to see Denji eventually get into a relationship, form some bonds with some people, and hopefully live his life up to the best. And hopefully, eventually, get into school or something like that. Now, of course, Denji comes out of this and he's looking really fine and everything, but now he has the devil's heart inside of him. Now, at this point, we are introduced to a character named Makima, and she is the devil hunter, and she's actually the leader of the devil hunter organization in Japan. So after the events of this happening, she ends up taking Denji under her wing and treats him well and makes him a government pet, which basically means that he is forced to do anything that the government tells him to do. But Denji sees her as someone who loves and cares for him. And that's because he's never had someone who has treated him so well in his life before. So in the midst of this, Denji makes it his ultimate goal to have a relationship with Makima. And that's pretty much the premise of the whole story. Now I could go into further detail later on. But without further ado, let's go and head on into the artwork section. Now I'm going to be honest, I am not an artist, but I know when good art is there. Tatsuki Fujimoto is, of course, an amazing artist and mangaka. Now, saying that the artwork is amazing is an understatement. In fact, I would say that it's probably the best I've ever seen come out of Jump. The amount of detail put into any shot is phenomenal, 
and it makes you just want to sit there and then take it all. And keep in mind, at the time, this was weekly. You had insane artwork coming out every single week. I mean, look at this shot and tell me that you did not just get goosebumps. Even the paneling is amazing and how the mangaka sets up everything just keeps you going. As the page flips, you are greeted by a shocking moment. Overall, I would say that the artwork and paneling is phenomenal. Now let's go ahead and let's head on into the characters section. And we start off with our main character, Denji, who is of course Chainsaw Man. Now we already know that his ultimate goal in life is to get into a relationship with Makima. Throughout the story, Denji has multiple women like him or want to have a relationship with him in some sort of way, but he always ends up turning them down due to wanting to pursue Makima. Even with this in mind, you're still rooting for him to get that relationship in some sort of capacity, even though his main goal is still to pursue Makima. I found myself loving Denji's character and his emotional changes throughout the series and seeing him gain friendships along the way, such as Power and Aki. I hope that in part two, he can make some friends due to majority of his friends actually being killed off in the fight with Makima. And while doing this, he's also going to have to take care of his little sister, who is actually the devil incarnated of Makima. But with this trauma that Denji has due to the fight with Makima, I definitely think that we will see some sort of arc that Denji will have some sort of contemplation on having relationships with other people. Now, of course, we can't have a great series without an amazing villain. And that character is, of course, Makima. And I'm gonna be honest, Makima seemed like a character that kinda had something off about her. And surprisingly enough, I was actually correct. During the entire time of part one, Makima is sitting there and playing with Denji's emotion, saying stuff like, oh, you could have a date with me if you do this or you could have a kiss if you do that. And this type of stuff acts as a sort of puppetry for Denji and playing with his emotions. And all of these actions that she had kind of made me feel like she had something hiding from the rest of the world. And even with this in mind, I still was shocked at the end when I found out that she was the control devil the whole entire time and that she was manipulating every single part of the story. I'm hoping that in part two, there is some sort of remnants of her actions in part one affecting the current status of the world. And maybe she could appear as some sort of commentator on the events going on in part two. Also, let's not forget that Denji has some sort of trauma from his fight with her. This could also lead to her having some sort of cameo in the near future, whether it be through Denji's mind or maybe even through the little sister. But I definitely think that Makima is a perfect villain for this story and I can't wait to see what is in store for her as well in the near future. Now next on my list is Power and I'm gonna be honest Power is my favorite character throughout the series. I really liked her character development going from hating Denji to her being his best buddy to the point where she gives her life to save Denji in the end. Power not only saved Denji's life but also offered a sense of comic relief and the story got really really dark at times. For example, she crashes Kobanai's car after stating that she has a driver's license, and then of course, she ends up killing a person in the process. Her sacrifice at the end really cemented her as one of the most respected characters in the whole story. In part two, we already know that power will not be in the story as the power that we know, as she had died during the fight with Makima. But hopefully we could see her reincarnated self as either a enemy or a friend in the near future. Which can we point out that knowing Power's strength level, this could potentially make a really tough foe for Denji. Either way, on Death's doorstep, she states that she wants Denji to ultimately find her as either an enemy or a friend and make her his buddy again. Knowing Jump, they definitely will end up making Power come back in probably the near future to make people want to continue on reading the story. But I definitely think that Power will come back as an enemy. For Denji and this will be really hard for Denji to process and of course power will end up becoming Denji's friend again and they will go on and take on the big boss. Now next up is Aki and I'm gonna be honest Aki was one of the first characters that I wasn't thrilled about he just seemed like the generic uh, pushover character but then we got a little bit of backstory and I really liked his character. 
Basically, his family was killed by the gun devil, and this is his reasoning for hating all devils, whether it be Fiend or even being a hybrid like Denji. But as the story goes on, we see him gain a relationship with Denji and power, and ultimately realize that not all devils are evil and conniving creatures. And this really made me grow on Aki, and I really enjoyed his character development. And we already know that he will not return in part two due to becoming the gun devil's fiend, so I doubt that we'll see any more of him in the story, but maybe we'll get some sort of conversation between him and Denji in the past, or maybe him and Makima in the past. We already know that Makima's reincarnated self has the past memories as well, so maybe we could get her playing some sort of conversation between Aki and Makima. With that, I would definitely say that the characters are phenomenal. But let's go ahead and let's head on into the world building. Now heading on into world building, we are shown that there are devils and humans in this world. And not only are there devils, there are hybrids of them. Devils and humans can form contracts and allow them to use each other for their own benefit. Now, in order for these contracts to work out, both parties have to give something. For example, Denji at the beginning of the story gives Pochita some blood, and in return, Pochita has to help Denji with his daily tasks. But that's not the end of contracts. Devils can actually be summoned to help humans during a battle. For example, Aki can summon the Fox Devil, and that allows him to fight with the Fox Devil's powers to ultimately defeat other devils or humans or even fiends in this world. Now, not only are they able to use their powers as some sort of weapon, but they can also use it as a utility, as seen with Aki with his right eye being taken over by the future devil. And this devil pretty much allows him to see into the future for a certain amount of seconds or into the near future, whether it be like five years or something like that. Shifting gears, we know that the whole world is set around devil hunters. Now, devil hunters are people that hunt for devils. I mean, I think that's already self-explanatory. Now, each country has a set of special agents, and some of those being Quancy, Santa Claus, Aldo, and Joey. And they all have contracts with devils. Now, not only is Earth the major setting for the whole entire story, but we also have Hell. Now, not much is known about Hell at this current moment, so that will probably be something that is expanded on in part two. Now, what we do know is that when devils die, they end up getting reincarnated and sent to hell. As for part two, I would definitely like to see the, the world building expand tenfold with a little bit of expansion on the world of hell, especially now that Denji is going to be attending school. Maybe we could see new devils and contracts that we haven't seen before, and maybe there could be someone that is a fiend that is attending the school. And also maybe we could expand on hell a little bit more and hopefully visit there through some sort of contract with another devil. With our visit to hell, we could possibly see old characters come back that have actually been killed off due to the fight with Makima and we could see them come through with the reincarnation system possibly. All in all, I hope that part two goes amazingly well for Fujimoto as it starts this week in Jump Plus. And if you wanna see me review these chapters as they come out, let me know down in the comments section below. I really do think that this series has shaped itself to be a big contender for the new big three, but only time will tell. Either way, if you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications on and leave a comment on what you think about Chainsaw Man down below. But without further ado, I'm gonna get the heck out of here. I'm Foul Place and I'm out.